it was about to happen. I was about to be convinced that I was wrong about something. I was about to be convinced that I was wrong about climate change. And um, I was, yeah, thinking, well, I was watching this Simon Clark video all about climate change and clear air turbulence and how the jet stream winds um, of the planet have gotten faster or have gotten, gotten more turbulent over the last few decades. And um, they put that down to global warming. But I mean, I'm afraid to say, Oh, they put that down to increase my made CO2 emissions, but I'm afraid to say I think it might be correlation without causation, and I still don't think we know enough about solar weather to be able to say for certain that our planet isn't just receiving more solar radiation from the planet's corona. Um, we know the planet isn't receiving more solar radiation from the chromosphere, because um, it's mainly the chromosphere that we're studying at the moment in terms of, um, you know, well, satellite images of the sun and so on that mainly studies the chromosphere it studies sunspot data and solar flare data and from there we get um you know our our images of solar maxima and solar minima and these sorts of things the idea that i was trying to put forward was that we may be fl we're flying through the galaxy right the whole solar system is flying through the galaxy and on the corona um, they may be burning up more or less intergalactic dust, rock, gas and so on that we're just not aware of yet, that we're just not aware that um, more stuff is burning up on the corona at certain points in our journey around the, the galactic centre. So if more stuff is burning up on the corona of the sun, this atmosphere of the sun, this outer layer of the sun, um, we would have no way of detecting that yet. Um, other than by detecting minute or small changes in Earth's surface temperature. And um, if you sort of recall, you know, different periods in history, such as when the dinosaurs roamed the Earth, um, they roamed the Earth when the sun was a lot closer to the galactic center, I believe it's when they were wiped out. Um, and the Cretaceous period, for instance, was a lot warmer than it is today. And um, Part of the reason for that, I suspect, is because there was less gas, dust, rock, etc., burning up on the sun, burning up on the sun's atmosphere. And um, yeah, I, I still, well, for a variety of reasons which have to do with the physics of climate change, I don't necessarily believe it still. And it's an unpopular thing to, to say. It's um, the sort of thing that gets you shadow banned on the internet, which is wrong, I think. Um, I don't think taking carbon dioxide out of the atmosphere is going to um, lower the planet's temperature at all. I think if you wanted to lower the planet's temperature, you need to prevent some sunlight reaching the Earth. You could do worse than having a giant sun shield in space, for instance, to um, yeah, like cast a bit of shade on the planet. Um, cool it down slightly that way if you must. Um, I don't think yet yeah, removing CO2 is actually the answer. Having said that, I think that there's all sorts of dangers associated with the burning of fossil fuels. There's ocean acidification on the one hand, I don't deny that at all. Um, on the other hand, there's uh, geopolitical factors such as the fact that we may well blow ourselves up with hydrogen bombs over fossil fuel resources in the future and um, that's something that we really need to take into consideration and move more towards green uh, sustainable forms of power for those reasons um, and yeah move towards renewables t so that we um, don't blow ourselves up basically and don't engage in a nuclear conflict over natural resources I think that's a far bigger problem than um, man-made climate change so-called. So yeah, I think at this point with climate change, we have no way of delineating between whether or not it's a space-based factor causing these increases in temperature on Earth, which again, I'm not denying. I'm not denying that Earth's surface temperature seems to have increased. However, um, I still believe that the data from NASA is incomplete. And um, well, I, I know it is still incomplete. They don't take the averages for nighttime temperature as well, which is really kind of shoddy if, if you think about it. Um, the, the CO2 in the atmosphere, again, should be reflecting back an equivalent amount of infrared light into space to that which it traps by the greenhouse effect. And um, that's another thing that lots of people don't take into consideration. And um, we, we started this climate change stuff 
Um, we started the Intergovernmental Panel on Climate Change under the Reagan administration, and um, that was back in the late 80s, early 90s, before the, um, the first data on solar radiation, on infrared solar radiation, came out. And um, you can see Carl Sagan's testimony before Congress. He's laboring under the illusion that, um, uh, that the sun emits mostly visible light. That is not the truth at all. It doesn't emit mostly visible light, it emits mostly infrared radiation, which we know now. So <clears throat> it stands to reason that CO2 in the atmosphere, um, if it's just dangling in the atmosphere, has a 50 50 chance of, well, if, for the sun, radiation coming from the sun, it's more likely to reflect it back into space. For infrared coming from the earth, it's more likely to reflect it back towards the earth. And the two effects cancel one another out. <laughs> and that really is, I'm afraid, how it sort of works. But um, yeah, I mean, increases in, in jet streams and so on, increases in clear air turbulence and so on. Again, that's explained just by the planet getting warmer because more stuff would be burning up on the corona at certain points in the sun's travel around the galactic centre. So I thought I'd extend that possibility out there for you today to digest and to see what you thought of that. So yeah, thank you everyone for watching. Bye, love you lots.